In this tutorial, we're going to expand on the command line blogging application that we built a few lessons ago by incorporating it into the Express.js framework so that a user can add and view posts through a web page which saves the posts to a database. So as we did before, we're still going to use an SQLite database, which isn't ideal for a production application for lots of different reasons such as security and the amount of data it can hold. But the idea of this lesson really is to recap the previous Express.js lessons and see how you would use the framework to create a working application. So let's get started. I'll create a new Express.js application from the command line using the Express.js generator. And I'm also going to install chalk, just like we did for the command line blogging project, just so we get a bit of color in our output on the command line. And of course, I'll also install the SQLite 3 package to give us the ability to access an SQLite database. So in the rest of this video, we're actually going to create the HTML form which will take our blog post information and actually save it into the database. But before we do that, we'll actually create a setup script like we did in the previous lesson to actually create the database when the application is first set up. So I'm going to do two things here. I'm first going to create a config file which just exports two properties, the database name that's going to be the file name that will contain the actual SQLite database, and also the name of the table that's going to store our blog post information. Next, let's actually create that setup script. Which first starts off by importing all of the dependencies that we need to set up our database. And then we then just generate a template literal that creates a table inside of the database that has a few fields such as the title of the post, the author, and also the blog content itself. And we should probably also include the date when the post was created. And then that statement's just run against the SQLite database. And if that all works out okay, we see a message on the screen saying that the database was created. So to run this script as before, we'll add it as the script to the package.json file so that we can run it with npm. And let's actually go ahead and run it now and see if we can create that database. So you can see we get the message that everything went okay and also that the database file has now been created within our project directory. So with the database set up, let's turn our attention to creating the form that the user will submit to create a new blog post. So in our views folder, I've created a new EJS template simply called form, which will hold the contents of the HTML form which we can then include in other views by including it as a partial. So we just need three bits of data to actually create our post within the database. We need the title, the author and the content itself. We'll populate the date of the post automatically. So let's add some labels around these just so the user can tell which field is which. Let's just include that in our index.egs template for the moment. And let's quickly run our application to see how that looks for the moment. So obviously not the prettiest form to look at at this point, but we'll tidy it up with some CSS in a future lesson. And one thing we have missed out here is just adding a submit button so that the user can complete the form. So with all our inputs together, let's actually wrap this inside of a HTML form tag which will be used to submit the data to a route that we create within Express. So the form is going to submit its data to forward slash add post, which is the route that we'll create in just a second. And we've set the method of the form to post so that the data doesn't get added to the URL as it would do with a get request. And the mechanism of sending the data is hidden away from the end user. So the next job is to create this new route, the add post route. 
and I'm just going to add it into the index routing module for now, just so we can get this set up quickly. So when our post route is triggered, we actually want to extract the form data from the request that's incoming. And we can do this by accessing the request.body object. So inside this object will be all of the post data that's sent from the form, which if we go back to our form that we just created, you can see we've got three properties of title, author, and content. So I'm actually just going to use a bit of ES6 structuring here to extract those various bits of data that's been sent via the form. So once we've extracted this data from the request body, we're then pretty much in a position where we can actually send our data to the database. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the code from our existing command line blob project as we're essentially doing the same thing, except this time we're getting our data from a web form rather than from the command line. And we'll also just set the date to the current date as an ISO string. And of course we need to import the dependencies to this project so that we have the SQLite database, config and chalk packages available to us. And one thing we'll want to do once the post request has finished is actually redirect the user back to somewhere, otherwise they'll just get stuck on a blank page because our route isn't actually rendering any content at the moment. So we can do that by calling the redirect function on the result object. And I'll just redirect us back to the home page once the database statement to insert the new blog post has completed. So let's head over to the browser and actually try and add a blog post in our new form. And once I've filled out all the details, I'll just hit the submit button. And it doesn't look like much has happened because we've just been redirected back to the home page again. But if we have a look in our terminal, you can see there's a message in there saying that we've added a new post to the database. So we can now be pretty confident that the data that we've sent across is now stored in our SQLite database. So in the next lesson, we'll work on displaying those blog posts by retrieving them from the database. But if you have a tool to inspect SQLite databases on your machine, you should be able to open that database and see that the blog post has actually been created. And here I'm just using the DB browser for SQLite. So if you want to verify that your blog posts do exist in the database, you can download a tool such as this to inspect your SQLite database offline. So in this lesson, we've created our new Express application and we've added some config and some setup so that the application can be installed correctly and the database installed. And we've also set up a form partial that can be included anywhere within our application that as we've just seen, accepts some data which then can be submitted to our SQLite database. In the next lesson, we're going to create a view that will actually read the SQLite database and display a list of blog posts that have already been created.